the first 72 volt rev one ride one up e-bike let's go you have been waiting for part number four and it is finally here with the rev one we got the battery in from powerful lithium we also got a charger from power lithium some nice t-shirts that they sent us as well that you guys are going to get if you guys order this battery if you guys are one of the first five people they will send you one of their 72 volt chargers so you can have one of those on hand so you don't have to buy one separately but finally we're getting to it it should be very simple to put this battery in there are a few things i need to show you though as we put it in that we're going to have to modify and some things to look out for so you don't mess up your battery as you go riding then by the end of this video we will actually take it out on the street and go for a ride and have a very good time with it but it's going to be a very short ride then part number five is we'll actually go take it up do some speed tests and all that stuff but i need to make sure it's safe first so let's get to it so let's take a look at this battery after it took about two weeks to be made. Keep in mind, uh, they might get a lot more orders after this video, so expect it to take maybe a month, maybe a month and a half to get your battery. Just a heads up about that. This is a uh, 72 volt, 34 amp hour battery. To put that in perspective, this is a 52 volt battery, 20 amp hour. And to give you an idea, this is a thousand watt hours roughly, and this is 2400 watt hours. So that's a huge difference. You're definitely gonna get a lot more range with this battery. The only thing I would suggest though, is you wanna keep out of the power if you wanna get the good range because you definitely need this big of a battery if you're gonna be pushing about 5,000 to 8,000 watts on this bike. Now here is how the charger looks. It also has their number on there, so if you guys wanna contact them. This battery should be on their website already, so you guys can go ahead and order it. It's 1,900 bucks, it is pretty expensive, I get that. You guys can save $100 with my discount code. It's also gonna come with this connector right here. This is a QS8 connector, and it comes to a positive and negative. So we're gonna have to hook this up to our controller. Very simple to do, it's like two bolts. I think they're 10 millimeters each, and you're good to go on that. Once you hook that up, this side will plug into that side. And then the charger that they send uses XT60. And if you're gonna come down here, this is how you charge it. So when we come down to the bike, you have some options on how you could charge it. You can just leave that cable in there. Every time you wanna charge it, just you know take these off and uh, just hook up your charger that way. Or you can cut something on the thing and have the little you know plug stick out this way or up on the top or on the side, whatever you wanna do. I'm just gonna leave my wires in there when I need to charge it. I'll just pull down the cage on the side and charge it that way. But let's get into uh, installing this battery and uh, I'll show you how it fits. So I opened the cage to show you how you're gonna slide this battery in. So I have the first batch of cages that got shipped out to everybody and I wanna show you the difference between each side. So I opened them up so you can see. If you can pay attention, this one slides all the way down. If you guys can see that. So this is the side that you're gonna to wanna to put the battery in. If I come to this other side, you're gonna notice that it actually is on a hinge. It doesn't actually go all the way down. So you have like this much clearance that you're not gonna be able to fit that battery in. So you're gonna to have to go to the other side and put the battery in on that side. Another thing I suggest is ordering some of this stuff. Now, if you guys see that on camera, I'll put a link down in the description as well. Uh, this is some padding that's gonna go underneath the battery. You can also put it on the sides if you want. Um, I just put a few on the bottom. I actually just put one just for, for now, you know, just so I can uh, get the battery in. I also did switch out these bolts right here. I highly, highly suggest don't even using the bolts that I currently have. I would go down the Home Depot and I'd find something that's completely flat because 
You don't want your battery to rest on these because it's gonna be bumping and hitting stuff. You definitely don't wanna have any issues with it puncturing the battery down here. So I'm probably gonna to go to a Home Depot one of these days and get some flat uh, screws and stuff to put down here. But I would still highly suggest using a mat. Put this mat in here and just make sure that the battery sits on top of that and that will definitely uh, soften some noise up and also protect it from the bolts underneath. Another thing I did in between part three and part four is I got some straps. I'll also put a uh, Amazon link down to that as well. And that basically goes through the cage on this side, comes to the other side and holds it in the front. So obviously this cage is not going anywhere. The whole bike is moving with it. I also put one in the back, if you can see that down right here and it comes through the back that's holding the back of this cage together. So at least you have some more strapping points, you know, to hold it down so it's not gonna like swing back and forth just in case you take a turn very fast because the only thing you had was those four bolts down there. So now you at least have it mounted in the front and the back. So we need to hook up this cable first to the controller because if we don't, we're not gonna have the room once the battery goes in there. So it's very simple. I have a wire connected to it already and that's just because I wanted to see if the motor worked and everything like that. So you're not gonna have these two cables, but it's basically the same concept. So if you look down there, you have a power and a ground. It's red and black, 10 millimeters, or you can use a screwdriver, but it's gonna have to be very short because you don't have a lot of room right here. Um, so I'm gonna take this one off and install the new one for the new battery. All right, we got our new cables in. I like the fact that they are short, so it doesn't take up a lot of room in this cage. And uh, I should have routed it a different way. I think the black cable should have went underneath these wires right here in the back, but it's okay, it's still out of the way. The next thing I'd say after you hook that up is just push all your cables towards the back on the other side, just open the cage up. So then you can have an empty spot to uh, slide this battery in. Make sure you put your little foam liner down here and you should be good to go. And then we'll move on to the next thing once the battery's in there. All right. It should go in pretty easy. Try not to put too much stress on the cage on the side because you do not want to bend this down and break it. It is a little hard with that foam liner in there if you don't have it like glued down or anything like that, but I don't plan on gluing mine. And that's pretty much how it's gonna sit. There's gonna be your charging cable right here. I like to have this on this front side because I didn't wanna have it on the back side. It's easier to just connect it just this way. Like look how nice that is. And then we can just push this cable underneath here. So I'm gonna hook it up right now. We should be good. I don't know if we'll see a spark. I don't think so though. Should be all right. Make sure we got that connected the right way. There we go. No spark. Normally QS8 is anti-spark, but you just never know. Um, so technically right now, the bike should be active and the motor should turn on, everything should be good. But before we actually do that, I don't want the battery to fall out or anything like that. So uh, here's the charging port. I'm gonna tuck that away in here. All the cables that you do have on the back that you push to the other side, just bring those back in and just kind of push them around, like probably somewhere in this section right here. Um, the thing that you need to pay attention to is that when you do try to close this cage, it's not gonna close. And I wanna show you what we're gonna have to do to fix that. All right, we're close up here with the camera and if you really wanna close the cage with the battery in it the way it is right now, you definitely can, but I would highly suggest not doing that because you can puncture the battery. So you're gonna notice right now that uh, this cage has two bolts. You got two right here, two right here, or I should say screws. Uh, I already removed one of them because I couldn't actually close the cage. I mean, I was forcing it, but I saw that it was puncturing it, so I don't wanna mess it up. So what I wanna show you when taking this off is what's going on. So this is how the battery sits inside there, right? So you have a screw that sits right here, and then you have a screw right here. This one does not come in contact with the battery. It clears it ever so slightly, like barely. And then this front one also clears it as well, but this one hits. So we took this one out to clear. We also have to take this one out to clear, and we should be okay when doing this setup. Um, we are only gonna have uh, one screw on both sides, but I think it's gonna be okay for this cage. We're not doing too much to it. So I'm gonna remove this one, and this should clear on this side, and then we'll move uh, to the other side. All right, so once we remove those, it closed effortlessly and we are good on this side. Now let's move on to the other side. All right, so we moved on to this side and uh, 
This connection right here is your Bluetooth dongle, so you can uh, modify the bike. Um, to do that with the app, you do have to disconnect this little white cable right here. Once you disconnect this, the app on your phone will work. So that's how you change your power, your flux, all that kind of stuff to get more top speed out of it and put the max power in it. Or you can turn it down if it's just too fast for you. So always disconnect this, super simple. You need this connected at all times to do the Bluetooth on your phone. Uh, so just push these in here. There is one other connection that you're gonna notice. Uh, it's right here if you guys can see that. This is your secondary hall sensor just in case the first one goes out. So that's just a backup just in case something happens on this setup and it stops working. You can try that plug out and see if that does anything. Um, so this cable goes to the front, all the wiring harness, the, like, the brakes, the sensors, the display up there. So just tuck this away. And this is how this side looks. It looks perfect. Now, I already removed these two screws right here. Some other screws that we might have to remove are these two down here because these two do not interfere with anything. Same with these, but these two on the bottom do. So I'm gonna have to remove those. Another thing that you could do if you do not wanna take the screws out for whatever reason, get a grinder or a Dremel and go onto the other side and just cut the bolt as low as you can go, but keep the nut on there. And you should be fine doing it that way as well but uh, I'm just gonna take them off to make it simpler for me. All right, so those were a little bit more harder than expected, and that's just because it was really hard to get down to those bolts, and then plus the cage kind of falls over on itself, so trying to get a screwdriver on the outside was a little difficult. But I just wanna show you real quick that you can see the battery right there. You can see how it was puncturing into the battery right there, and that was without any riding. I have not taken this down the street yet. You can see the back one was barely ever so slightly hitting that. So um, yeah, like I said, you know, you could just grind off the ends of these ends right there with like a grinder or a Dremel or something like that, or just take them out like I did. Now we should be able to button this up and go for a ride. I think that's all we have to do. First, I wanna make sure it turns on and then we'll uh, put our helmet on, GoPro, and let's go. All right, let me turn this thing on. Let's see. All right, there we go. This is assist number two. Now we do have an issue with this bike. Um, the thumb throttle in the last video, if you guys would have seen when we did part three and we hooked up a secondary battery and it just stopped working, the throttle is actually messed up. So I had to contact the Amazon seller and they're sending us a new one. So we're gonna have to replace this thumb throttle with a different one because it's having uh, fluctuations and everything like that where it wants to work and doesn't work. But let's see how it does on this uh, video. Let's go out for a ride right now and go test it out. And then I'll talk a little bit about it. We only have 20%, so we can't go very far. All right, it's gonna be hot for this guys, but uh, I'm afraid of going down because it's a brand new setup. I did retighten the nuts on the back. One of them does need to be replaced because one was already stripped when I got it out, like out of the box, like it was just messed up. So it's not fully stripped, it still locks down, but it looks like the metal is kind of like sheared off on a, a few threads. So um, if you have that issue, I would definitely get a replacement one on Amazon or contact the company you ordered the kit from. I'm just gonna chance it, I should be okay. 20%, um, we're not gonna be able to go that far, do anything crazy. I did turn the bike down to, I think it was 60 amps on the controller, so we're not running 100 amps, so it's not gonna go as fast, but at least we can get a feel of how the bike is. All right, so we turn it on with this little thing right here. Should pop up MB power. You guys can probably see that. It says 24% now, it said 20% earlier. This battery definitely needs to be charged and balanced and all that kind of stuff. Another thing you guys are gonna notice is that we have a bar sitting right here and this is for the stock display so we can run the stock uh, lighting off the stock battery. So I still have the stock controller in here and everything like that. So if we turn that on, we're gonna be able to have both displays running. Now there is a bad thing about this setup. It's always gonna have a little flashing error code right there because no motor's connected, but this will automatically turn off in I believe five to six minutes and your lights will completely turn off. I don't know if there's a way of messing with it, if maybe you keep hitting the pedal assist like up and down just to keep it on. Um, I didn't see any setting that changes it so it doesn't have a cutoff timer. So you're limited on when your, your lights turn off and all that stuff, so that's something you have to worry about. Unless you just get rid of the stock battery altogether, you put another 72 volt battery right here, run a cable, connect two of them. You could do it that way too, and then get a light on both sides right here, somewhere in the front, and just, you know, rechargeable one, and then you won't have to worry about the stock lighting system. You will lose the turn signals, and then you can have a brake light in the back as well, however you want to do it. So, uh, whoa. Trying to see where this display is going to sit best so you guys can see it. I didn't remove this film yet, and I don't plan on it just in case. Um, I want to get some miles on it and see how it is first, and then, uh, then we'll test it out. 
So I gotta get used to this, because this says zero and then this says one, so I gotta make sure not to use this display. I gotta look at this one. I actually think I would rather have this one at the top because it's uh, more noticeable up here, but I don't know, we'll just see. What's up, man? Uh, Nothing, hope I don't die because I just built this thing, so. <laughs> You'll be all right. Bro. Yeah, we'll see what happens. All right, so we gotta go, we gotta go in a higher mode than that. Oh my God, <laughs> we're already moving. Woo -hoo -hoo. Already past the stock speed. Man, that's crazy. Um, one thing I'm noticing is none of these brakes are working like at all. Like absolutely like at all. I don't know if it's because I cleaned the bike one of these days and it got stuff on it. Not sure, but uh, these aren't working. And the throttle is garbage right now. It's not the fault of the company that sent it. It just, this one has an issue. It's like the little short connection in there. So I was like moving and then it cut off. You could always put the full throttle on here if you want. One thing I'm noticing already is uh, the chain. So the sprocket sits like right here, but then the new chain on the sprocket in the rear now sits way over here. So the chain's bent like this. It's even worse than factory. I can't even barely move these pedals. It feels like the pedal and the chain is like locked out and it's like messed up, like bad, bad. Another thing is I'm noticing is the throttle, obviously right off the bat, it's like cutting in and out. It's a little sketchy. I shouldn't have actually rode it today until I got that throttle replaced. But I just wanted to check it out and we're, we're definitely moving. We're going uh, 44 miles an hour. <laughs> this feels very solid. This is like absolutely comfortable. Heck yeah. Think about it, we're on 20% battery, 60 amps doing 44 miles an hour, if that's reading correctly. The only thing that sucks is since we don't have the other motor connected, this one doesn't read any uh, uh, speed or anything like that, which would be nice. I wish it did. Oh God, brakes, 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 brakes. These brakes suck. They're not working too good right now. Woo. All right, we definitely have a, uh, hey, don't go, man. We definitely have a lot more power coming into the turn, so you definitely got to be careful. But this is cool, guys. This is the first 72 volt Rev 1 ride one up e bike. Let's go. This is awesome. Oh, I can't wait to do like part five now. I just got to go home. We got to charge the battery. I got to go on the app, which I'll show you on part number five what to do on the app on how we, uh, you know, get the power up there. But uh, I already definitely have a, uh, uh oh. Uh-oh, there's a, there's a big problem, I feel. Oh, I feel a big problem. Something, something definitely happened. It's in the back, too. It's definitely uh, in the rear with the chain. Uh-oh. Something's moving. I'm going to have to pull over here on the side. See, this is, this is why we test and we don't do anything like crazy. All right, so I want to say this thing locked up on me. Yeah, so this thing, oh, that thing completely came all the way loose. It's now against the frame. That's why that thing locked up on me. So we can't go very far. At least I'm down the street. I'm just going to try to get it back. We might have to take this rear motor off because, look, I can't move these pedals at all. Like, they don't want to move. So there's a lot of traffic, too. So uh, let's just be careful. Ooh. Oh. Oh man, I'm gonna take it easy, guys. That's why I'll be testing tune, baby, because I don't wanna mess you guys up in the future. This should be a definitely an easy fix, but I definitely know what I'll be doing the next couple hours. Man, it's getting worse and worse. I don't wanna be left stranded out here. Holy crap. That thing is like unthreading bad, like bad, bad. Now it's uh, digging into the frame, so it looks like I'm gonna have to walk this bike back home. I don't trust it. Damn, they left me out here. I was a little worried about it, not too bad. But uh, yeah, we ain't riding that. I'm not gonna have this wheel come off or anything like that. I'm glad we're close by the house. And this is what I'm talking about, guys. If you can see that down in there, this is supposed to be threaded super close to the inside of that. This is not supposed to be sitting on the frame and uh, it's definitely grinding on the frame. So that's unfortunate, unfortunate. Look, you can't move these, like, <laughs> well, barely, but 
Damn. All right, hopefully we didn't do too much damage. All right, guys. I couldn't have left you on that bad note. I just felt like it wouldn't have been a complete video if I would have left you guys hanging like that. So uh, I just left my house. Um, I went back for an hour. I took the whole entire wheel all apart all over again. And uh, I had to take the chain off. Everything is stripped. Everything that holds the actual rear sprocket on for the chain, all that is gone. Um, I can't get anything to thread onto this motor, unfortunately. So uh, we have no pedals that work. I mean, they weren't going to work anyway with pedal assist, but I mean, it just feels like uh, they all just move. It's just free spinning. Uh, there's no resistance. There's no chain. So legal reasons right now, I can easily get pulled over if a cop sees me even doing 28 miles an hour in the bike lane if he sees I have no chain. I'm gonna pull over here and uh, I wanna show you guys really quick. I'm also trying to bleed these brakes in because they are just trash right now ever since uh, we did this setup. So uh, let me show you what everything looks like now. I also broke my rear lights. I'm gonna have to contact them because when I was putting the bike over with all this extra weight we have with the battery and the motor, I couldn't flip it over by myself. I would've needed two people. So uh, I tried doing it by doing the back wheel and flipping it over and I broke the tail light. Also maybe scratch this up a little bit, but you can't see that. But anyways, this is what I want to show you guys that you guys saw in the last part um, a couple minutes ago is uh, now we have nothing back here. So there's no chain, no nothing. I think what happened is the chain was so tight and this has actually been happening on the stock rev ones as well, even without doing the 72 volt motor is it was so tight that as you're uh, riding, the thing is just stuck on there and it's slowly like rotating loose and it rotates all the way until it hits the frame and it just messed up like the frame like grinding into it so i'm glad i stopped when i did i should have stopped earlier but i was trying to get home i mean i didn't want to push it it is very very hot out here and uh i'm a little worried since i you know put it back together just real quick bolted everything down to make sure everything's on there because last time i bolted i put loctite i didn't put loctite on this time but still feels like everything's running good we're at nine percent under throttle so that's where i'm gonna leave this video um it didn't turn out the way I wanted it to, but hopefully in the next part, we're not going to have a chain on this setup. Uh, just be careful if you do put a chain on there. Do not put it too tight because you're going to have the issue I had. And in part number five, we'll have a full battery charge and we'll see how fast this thing will actually go. I'll turn up the amps to 100. I'll show you on the app how to do that. And uh, yeah, part number five should be good as long as nothing bad happens. So uh, I'll see you then, guys. I know I was going to say the outro a long time ago, but now this is the true outro. Love you guys. True MVPs for sticking around. And uh, I'm going to keep trying to uh, do better on this channel for you guys. I want to make sure you guys are safe at the end of the day, you know. So, all right, guys. Take care. I got to make it home. I got 5%. Go, bus. Go. <laughs> We're going to run out of battery juice. I don't want to kill this battery 100%. That is not good for it. All right. I'm going to get it on a charger, guys.